When we started with the psychological foundations of education, we looked at different psychological theories and then we grouped them into three large groups. Behaviorism, cognitive psychology, those two we've looked at. The third group is phenomenology, which we will look at today. Phenomenology comes from phenomenon. What is a phenomenon? A phenomenon could be an event, a happening, an accident, could be a thought, could be an activity, could be anything. That's a phenomena. It happens. It must happen. And when something happens, it is consciously happening. So phenomenology examines patterns of subjective experience and consciousness. What do young people do? What do anybody, forget young, what do people do when they are conscious? How does consciousness affect what people do, when they do, how they do, why they do? That is phenomenology. Focus upon a systematic reflection on and investigation of the structures of consciousness. When you're conscious, you are aware of the real. When you're aware of the real, you identify issues, conflicts, problems, and then you hopefully should do something about it. Simply identifying a problem and doing nothing about it makes no sense. So how do you take a realistic situation and put it through a scientific investigation is what phenomenology would look at. And because it is conscious, because it is human, many times it is known as the humanistic approach or the humanistic theories of psychological development. It is based solely on consciousness. What happens in your consciousness while you can actually think? If you're ill, if you're sick, if your consciousness is in doubt, phenomenology will not address those issues. We want to be certain that you are aware of what is happening and you can then talk about it. Maybe the fault is yours, maybe the fault is external, maybe the fault is with another individual, whatever it is. Those kinds of issues, when you address them, fall under phenomenology. Individuals will be influenced by others, but will not have the same experience. So let's take our classrooms. Let's say, to be simplistic, 20 students in a classroom, one teacher. 20 students are being influenced by one individual. Does all of the 20 students, do they each walk away with the same influence from the teacher? The answer is no. And you wonder why. It's the same individual. All 20 of them have heard the same thing, done the same thing, being involved in the same thing. Why don't they have the same experience? Those type of questions are answered by phenomenology. People will not take away the same experience from a given situation, from a given event, from a given happening, or from a given individual. Views the social world as multiform structure. There is, of course, inner subjectivity, and we all have it. We all have our inner self, okay? And only we know it. You don't know my inner self. I don't want to even share my inner self with you. And we keep that private. That is ours. But there is a group understanding and unity with all the different groups. So a classroom is a group, there is group unity, there is group understanding, but each of those 20, 30, 40 students has their own inner subjectivity as well. And that is hidden. It's not going to come to the front because a lot of us would not like our inner subjectivity to come to the front. So although we are very different and very unique inwardly, we tend to blend with the group we are in at a particular time. 
So we blend with our families differently. We blend with our cousins differently. We blend with our friends differently. We bl blend with our classroom people differently. We blend differently at a wedding function or a birthday event or whatever. And that difference is important, although we all have a unique inner self.